You might already be a data analyst, but you just don't realize it yet. And in today's episode, I'll prove it to you. By the end, you'll be saying, wait, I already have transferable data skills. I just need to reframe them and maybe I'll level up a little bit after. Because most people think a data analyst is a title that is given to you by a company. Something that is bestowed upon you by the powers that be in the universe of these huge company organizations, right? But I'd argue a data analyst is someone who analyzes data. But even more rudimentary than that, it's someone that solves problems with data with an analytical mindset. So it's not something given to you by some company. It's something that you can go out and claim even today. And chances are, by that definition, you are a data analyst. So welcome to the club. Let's go ahead and let's have a five second dance party to celebrate, ready? All right, now that that's over, most people are already doing data analyst work in their everyday jobs or lives. They just don't call it that yet. And in this video, I'll dive into a few different industries and professions to prove it to you. But for now, how many of you have ever opened a spreadsheet, made a chart or tracked metrics at your job? That is data analytics. You are seeing data, making sure the data is right, scanning over it, finding patterns and trends, communicating your findings and taking action off of the data and the analysis that you see. Isn't that exactly what data analytics is? And doesn't a data analyst do data analytics? So are you a data analyst? I vote yes. Just because you didn't write a SQL query to do this analysis doesn't mean you didn't actually do the analysis. You did the analysis. You don't have to use SQL or Python or Tableau or even Excel. Heck, I mean, I could even argue that you can do data analytics with just a piece of paper and a pen. Not even a pencil, a pen. In my opinion, the requirement is you need to be using any sort of data, whether it's stored in a table or not, and make your best judgment using that data and the analysis that you do. And I'd be thinking, okay, Avery, that's absolutely BS. My job has absolutely nothing to do with data analytics. And I am not a data analyst, I promise you. And if that's you, let me walk you through seven different professions and show you how people just like you are already doing data analysis without even realizing it. Let's start with number one, a sales professional. Here's how you are already a data analyst. Do you meet monthly sales quotas? Or do you analyze lead conversion rates by channel to identify top performing sources to maximize business profit? Do you follow up with leads via email? Or do you create weekly sales reports that monitor sales pipeline health and forecast future revenue? Do you just enter customer info into a CRM? Or do you use people data to segment customers and personalize outreach to improve business efficiency? See the difference here? So if you are in sales, you are a data analyst. And if you want to learn more about going from a sales position to landing a data analyst role, check out this interview I did with one of my accelerator students, Tim, on how he went from sales to data analyst. And I'll have it linked to the description down below. All right, moving on to number two, teachers. Here's how you are already a data analyst. Do you teach music to high schoolers? Or do you track client performance data to more effectively perform at five plus live events each year? Do you take role for students? Or do you analyze team participation, engagement, and find trends to identify improvements and intervention? Do you just grade student tests? Or do you track, analyze, and make data-driven decisions for 30 plus clients? See the difference that you can make when you reframe what you're already doing into a data analyst perspective, it's amazing. So if you're a teacher, you are a data analyst. And if you wanna learn more about the transition of going from a teacher to landing your first data job, you can listen to this story of my student, Alex Sanchez, who went from math teacher to data analyst at 7-Eleven, analyzing Slurpee data. We'll have a link in the show notes down below that you can check it out. Number three, delivery drivers. So here's how you are already a data analyst if you're a delivery driver. Do you follow GPS instructions? Or do you analyze complex traffic patterns using historic data, live alerts, and current trends to optimize your delivery windows? Do you just deliver packages or do you ensure each client's project is completed according to standards? Do you send texts to recipients to get into locked apartments or do you A-B test communication to minimize operational downtime? See the difference here? These are the same tasks, different mindset. If you're a delivery driver, you are a data analyst. And if you want to learn more about how you can go from delivering packages to delivering insights, check out this episode I did with Lenai Accelerate students, Jen Hawkins, who went from delivery driver to data analyst. And we'll have that linked in the description down below as well. Moving on to number four. If you're a physical therapist, here's how you are already a data analyst. Do you design patient recovery plans or 
do you track client recovery data to identify which procedures have the highest return on investment? Do you just take patient payment or do you accept and ensure financial transactions are correct with billing codes, prices, and descriptions? Do you chart your patient's progress or do you create and audit service logs to align with customer success? Big difference, right? If you are a physical therapist, you are a data analyst. And if you want to learn more about the journey from physical therapy to data analytics, you can listen to this episode that I did with one of my accelerator students, Melly Santos who went from physical therapist to healthcare analyst. And of course, we're gonna have that in the description down below as well. Number five, and my personal favorite, if you're a stay-at-home parent, or honestly, any parent at all, here's how you are already a data analyst. Do you order groceries each week? Or do you track weekly expenses across five plus categories to reduce material waste and overspending? Do you tell your kids to do their chores? Or do you build and optimize task workflows using daily planners, time tracking, and reward systems to increase organizational productivity? Do you change poopy diapers? Or do you fix and log urgent client problems and ensure frequency is not too high or too low. This one especially hits home for me since I have two kids under two and I am constantly on my phone charting dirty diapers and feedings to make sure that my clients, I mean, my kids are getting exactly what they need to thrive. So if you're a parent, you're a data analyst, trust me. Number six, if you work in retail, here's how you are a data analyst. Do you restock the shelves or do you track hourly sales data to identify peak traffic and optimize inventory? Do you simply help customers find products or do you use a mental map to help clients find 1,000 plus different items in a matter of seconds. Do you help customers check out or do you process thousands of financial transactions with clean, accurate data every month? So if you work in retail, you are a data analyst. Number seven, if you're in construction, here's how you are already a data analyst. Did you simply just order the material from Home Depot or do you keep track of materials and pricing of key business materials? Did you talk to the vendors to get a couple of different quotes? Or did you collect and analyze pricing data from five plus sources to maximize ROI? Did you just double check the blueprints? Or did you identify high risk materials and procedures from current and historic data to minimize cost deviations? If you're in construction, you are a data analyst already. If you wanna hear how one of my accelerator students went from a construction cost estimator to a financial analyst, you can listen to that interview here. Or if you wanna to listen to the audio version, we'll have it in the show notes down below. Now, that's just seven professions. There's obviously a lot more professions that I can cover in just this one episode. So that's why I made a free tool for you that you can actually put in your profession and a couple of bullets, and it'll actually spit back how you've already been a data analyst. This is inside of my AI platform for aspiring analysts. That's called Data Fairy. It's 100% free to get started, so you can check it out at datafairy.io. That's datafairy.io. But remember, AI will never be as smart as me or as good looking looking as I am. So if you want me to do your profession and you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this on Spotify, go ahead and go to the comment section and comment what you do for work. What, what is your profession? And I'll try to respond to all the comments or if we get enough comments, I'll make another video and go through your professions one by one. Now, obviously, if you're in one of these professions or something similar, I don't think you should like go around to your friends and family or to your neighbors uh, and telling people that you work as a data analyst. But I do think you already have more experience than you realize. And that's the point of this episode. And I hope you're getting that. You're not as far away as you might think you are. You can definitely recognize patterns. You can find trends. You can solve problems. You can communicate your findings. You can present data to key stakeholders. And I do think that you should try to alter your titles on your LinkedIn or your resume. I don't want you to lie, but also just because your organization says that your title is physical therapist doesn't mean that it's illegal to put physical therapist analyst on your resume. Like you can bend the titles that are given to you. If you're analyzing data, why can't you say that you're an analyst in your title? I promise you, if you do this, like no magic law enforcement police officer is gonna come to your door, bang, 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 knock on your door, and you're gonna get in trouble from the job title police. There's not such a thing, okay? If anything, it's all going to be positive. You're gonna start getting more interviews because the ATS, the applicant tracking system, and the LinkedIn algorithm are set up to find people with experience. Companies wanna hire people with data experience already, and the more evidence you provide these algorithms, the ATS and LinkedIn algorithm, that you can become a data analyst because you've already kind of 
been a data analyst, you've already done analysis in the past, the better it's going to work out for you. And one of the easiest ways to kind of trick these algorithms is include the word data or the word analyst in your current and past job titles on your resume and on your LinkedIn. That alone can help you start getting noticed by recruiters and hiring managers. Let me talk about this in module one of my beginner data analyst bootcamp because it is so easy to do. Like we can literally do it in like a half hour or so, maybe even faster, 15 minutes. And it can yield so many good results so quickly. So literally, you can just add the word analyst to the end of your title. So for example, I was a chemical lab technician once upon a time before I was a data analyst. And so I could have just said I was a lab tech analyst. Or if that feels like it's too big of a stretch and you're a little bit too scared to do that, you could add the term data-driven on the front of your title. So for example, data-driven lab tech. And the algorithms, they're honestly pretty dumb and they just are happy to see the words data, happy to see the word analyst, and you're going to get boosted in the algorithm. You're going to have have a higher chance of actually having your resume seen by a human by just doing one of those two things. Now, of course, you could explain the nuance in an interview with a human that like, yeah, I was a chemical lab technician, but like I wasn't actually an analyst, but I was doing analysis. But if you don't like make this change on your resume or your LinkedIn and it feels like it's too big of a stretch, you're not going to have the opportunity to even explain that to a human. Like these algorithms, they're silly, you guys. You have to do certain things to game them. And trust me, this little trick is totally worth it because once you get into an interview, you can explain the whole situation to the hiring manager or to the recruiter. But computers don't understand the nuance that like you can have a role that does data analysis that isn't a data analyst. They're just kind of dumb algorithms. So hopefully with this, you're starting to feel a little bit more like a data analyst. And your first step to actually becoming a data analyst is to realize you already are one. Welcome to the club once again. And the next steps that you actually need to take to become a data analyst is to master the tech skills like Excel, SQL, Tableau, create projects and put them on a portfolio and start job hunting and networking like a pro. And if you want more help on how to do all of this, then you can go ahead and check out this episode right here. Or of course, if you're listening to the audio version, it's in the show notes down below. And that will tell you exactly what next steps that you should take. So thank you so much for watching Data Analyst. 